There's a new must-use weapon inside of Warzone, but more importantly, there are some secret changes that weren't mentioned inside of the patch notes that are going to wildly affect how you play the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this gameplay. I'm going to break down what those secret mechanics are. I'm also going to break down some really high IQ plays that I make, and then I'm going to show you the loadout for the must-use weapon. But I promise you, the secret mechanics are what you need to be focusing on. And in today's video, all right, boys, let's get it. We're shooting. I'm okay. be shooting like Supergirl this game. Get up for it. We're shooting like Supergirl this game. Now, all jokes aside, if you don't already know, there was a major update yesterday to Ricochet where they ended up shutting down multiple cheat provider sites. The cheats aren't functioning, but as we all know, it's a constant battle where the cheat providers, because they have so much money to make, will try to find a way to work around Ricochet. I still am of the camp. They need to make Ricochet like much deeper kernel level, much more aggressive. But as of right now, they're going to continue to update it. They banned 26,000 accounts. They're continuing to work, you know, to test third party or like to detect third party hardware, Cronus. But for any doubters, this gameplay was caught after that update went live. So I think we've already proven that your boy's legit. But what's more important is some of the new mechanics that happen in today's video. Okay. So I go ahead and land down. I'm going for a stronghold. I like to get the early loadout. And also it's usually pretty contested by sweaty players. I end up grabbing the AR. I don't center too well. I spot this player. And I can kind of tell just by the way he's moving, sitting behind a head glitch, trying to snake me a little bit. I get a couple shots and I immediately reposition. He starts to push me out. And whenever you're playing a sweaty player, you don't want to just chase after them when you get them weak, because what they want you to do is get into that sprint to fire animation, right? That animation where you have that gun up in the air takes so long to get your gun back down. And this guy knows I don't have any plates. I just landed. He doesn't have any plates. He's just going to try to ego me. And that's exactly what he does. So notice, I hold on to my L2, right? I try to meet him over on the other side. I could kill him on that cross if he went that direction. He doubles back. Slide cancels in. Great play. Start shooting me. And cracked killer almost takes me out. Fucking hell, brother. It was very, very sweaty lobbies yesterday. Skill based yeah, matchmaking was cranked. Hear that? Found footsteps? You hear those footsteps? And you can hear him running underneath me. So, what I do, I loot up this crate. I know that I just heard footsteps. I grab this. I grab any perk pack if I don't have it, just because I might get EOD or something to save my life. I shut the door. And I hear him running up. So what do I do? We talked about it in previous videos. If you don't know, and especially since I have two fully loaded ARs, I just start pre-firing. He freaks out. I'm not even hitting him. He freaks out and runs in. I start getting some shots. He's just lost. And even if I didn't, you know, kill him right there, I still had another weapon in my secondary, a Holger 2.6, where I could have used that. So from there, I end up taking the high ground. I spot a player up there on the ledge. I know that there's someone at the stronghold because I can see the gunshots down there. And obviously the stronghold is red, which means it's being contested. We'll get into some of the new mechanics here in a moment, but I think it's important to see kind of how, how this video starts off. Now listen to that. Hear that? Off to my right. I think that that's that guy on my right. So I challenge in, prepared to challenge the right but you can see there's a dead body there and it's actually the dead body flopping to the ground but i end up adjusting spotting the player on the left unfortunately he didn't have any plates so we sit here developers enemy. please make this process faster it was about a minute of sitting here waiting for this to finish now, as I work my way through some of the early game, I do want to shout out, I have officially re-signed with Scuf Gaming. You know, Scuf is my controller of choice, my weapon of choice. The new Envision has been incredible, and I've also been a big advocate of their instinct as well. And if you don't know, now you can get yourself your very own Iceman Isaac faceplate for both the Envision and the instinct. Because if you remember, the very early adopters of you who really believed in me and really believed in the Envision, you had to get the gray or the white faceplate. Now you can get the Iceman Isaac Envision faceplate if you want. That'll be linked in the pinned comment and the description. Huge shout out to Scuff for being a long-term sponsor of the channel. And a huge shout out to you guys for supporting me, believing in me. And the reviews have been raving on the Envision. Like people love that controller. It's absolutely my favorite controller they've ever dropped. They are working on getting IQ more stable. That is my only issue with it. I it's gotten better. There was a time where like IQ was crashing like once a day for me. Now it crashes like once a week. They're working on making it more and more stable. It's something I am aware of and I am tracking. So 
as I start to move up here, I heard gunshots, which made me push up here with the vehicle. I always like to rotate with vehicles or with oh, zip lines. And you can see, a, I spot a player on the roof right up here with a flashlight on me. Oh, Sniper scope. So I'm like, ah, that fight might be really annoying. I don't know if I want to take that, breaking a guy on a rooftop without a sniper. But as soon as I see him taking shots at other people, I'm like, you know what? I want to get involved. I decide I'm going to hold my shots because I don't want to start shooting until I'm confident I can get a kill. So I get about six feet higher by getting up on this rock ledge. And this is the new SOA in action. Keep in mind, I'm getting no aim assist right there. Here in a moment, you're going to see exactly how much this gun beams. I am shooting nukes with this. That is a fluke, that gunfight right there. This gun rips. Okay, so I spot another player up here on this roof. You can see a flashlight here, and you can also see a flashlight over here. So I know I have three players to deal with. Absolutely lace that guy. And then rather than trying to get this grenade to like hit in the air and blow him up in the air, I do a bounce shot. So it bounces up off that edge so I know I don't overshoot him. And I end up taking him out right there. Now, one of the things that they changed in this recent update is the audio. And for the first time in a long time, I'm actually really pleased with Warzone audio. Obviously, it still has a lot of work to do. There's still some inconsistencies, but they have buffed the parachute audio by 100 feet. So now you can hear people 100 feet farther away. So that means oftentimes you're going to see in today's video, I'm hearing people floating way above me that I normally wouldn't hear. I'm also going to hear people with ascenders much closer as well, because they also made it to where you can hear people using ascenders by 16 feet closer. So what that means is, let's say you're sitting on a rooftop, you can hear someone zipping up a lot sooner than, oh crap, they're getting off and shooting me. Now you can hear them as they're coming up or zipping towards you. You know, I don't really like that because I like to kill the campers. But what I don't like is people landing on me with no audio and you are I got killed a lot yesterday by people turning on me when I normally would be able to sneak up on them. And the audio has gotten a lot better in this update. Okay, let's go ahead and keep it rolling. There's a lot more secret changes to show you, including those that were not mentioned in the patch notes. So I don't know where this guy came from. You can see I'm getting shot. I can see him up in my top left. I know he's above me. He's up on the ridge line. Slide cancel out. Try to find him. He's crossing over. This gun rips. As I always mention, live ping people. I start shooting him because I know these buildings are made of nothing. You can see I spot him right there. Kind of shouldering that corner right there. He shoulders, good play on his part to try to get some info to see if I'm pushing. But then he makes a mistake. I hear wooden footsteps and then I hear footsteps stopping. So I start aiming high, thinking he's like, you know, standing up there, but he's prone out in the corner. He's got to be better than that. That is like the last body player that I find in the lobby because it is demonic, the rest of the lobby. TikTokers, streamers, tournament competitors, a lot of fun. Now, you guys know I like to use these balloons to rotate across the map, but while I do that, I'm going to talk about some more stealth changes. We're going to have some pretty cool ones that, once again, I haven't heard anyone talking about appear later in the video, but here are some from you all over on Twitter. So I asked you guys, I'm like, hey, I've noticed a few stealth changes. What have you guys noticed? And this is one that I'm seeing a lot of, and it's actually kind of scary as someone who plays a bit of mouse and key. A lot of players are saying something feels off with mouse and key. Crosshair goes to the center, but the bullets don't seem to after the first four to five shots. Because there was a new thing in the patch notes yesterday that says, upon aiming down sight, the crosshair will now directly center to the player's screen rather than easing into position. And I don't know if that animation is causing the bullets to be off as well. Honestly, on controller, aim assist is so strong in this game, and you'll see a lot of crazy aim assist clips later. But I'm seeing multiple reports of people saying aim feels off on mouse and key. So once again, Call of Duty is kind of screwing over mouse and key players. Hopefully they get that figured out pretty quick. I haven't played on mouse and key yet this season, but it's something to be aware of because I'm seeing a lot of reports of it all over the timeline. The other things that they added or rather messed up is your latency now will say NA as it does on my gameplay in the back, like not applicable. Uh, there seems to be a bug there that happened in the past and hopefully they make it to where your latency actually adjusts. Because me personally, I play different based on what my ping is. And then finally, Tired Marine, we, as we mentioned with some of the audio things, he's like, it's not just the zips being louder. He's like, all of audio occlusion is different. And I 100% would agree with that because all of audio, like I'm, it can be obnoxious sometimes, but I would rather have more audio information of like useful things like parachutes and footsteps than just not hearing it at all, which I love. Right now, the audio in the game is really, really solid. But let's go ahead and get back into the gameplay. Here is a really sweaty gunfight. You can see as I go up here, I see players fighting down here. 
You can see some gunshots going off. I see this player die. And I immediately see this player slide canceling. Throwing some shoulders. Can you hear me? So this guy is sweaty. He's throwing shoulders. He's getting ready. I can't prone out up there because he has an angle. If you listen closely, and ideally, whenever you're listening to these videos of mine and, you know, more of a coaching sense, you throw on your headphones. But if you listen closely, turn it up for you. You can hear this guy closing in on me and slide canceling towards me. So I back up. I use cover. I throw out my mosquito drone. Mosquito drone actually works, which is surprising. I'm pre-aiming in case, because I figured this guy would push into a building to avoid the mosquito drone. He starts wrapping around behind me. Great use of cover on his part, right? Because if he just stand out in the open, he would be dead. I'm not going to ego down that hallway because if I push right here, I'm pushing myself inside of a choke point where more than likely this guy's going to get fully plated and then re-challenge me. I can already tell this is a good player. I don't want to put myself in that situation. So and that's exactly what he does. He wraps left to re-challenge me. I take his height and he does exactly what I would do in this situation. He swings to Charlie Alley. He realizes I'm on top. And what he does is he's going to fake go inside, and then he's going to rip around outside on a wide swing. So basically what he's trying to get me to do is get curious and show my body over the edge as much as I can while he goes, fakes on the inside, and then he's going to swing wide. So that way he has a better angle at shooting me on top of the roof. So he's trying to get me to overexpose while also widening his angle. Check it out. He knows, he hears me above him, probably like clanking around on metal. Swings. As soon as he swings, I'm instantly like, great play. I need to like protect myself. So instantly you'll notice I start strafing back. Even before I get shot, I'm like, this is going to be really bad. I start strafing back and instantly prone out just because I know. Okay, good play. I expected that. Create space, create even more space. Snake for information. Get behind a piece of hard cover. I can hear him running around. I can hear him hit out this door and also start to run to my left. So exact same thing. I create space, backing up because he's trying to get a wider angle so we can see up on top of that roof. I get behind hard cover, pre-aim where I expect him to be, and just a gunfight there that I'm able to hit. I guess those are more of like respect teabags, but I call it out as predictable, but only because that guy's a demon. Really, really, really good play on this guy's part. And I guarantee you, if someone was hacking, and they'd be like, oh my god, look at Isaac, he's centering. That is an FPS kill skill called centering. It's what you should do in any FPS game where you expect your opponents to be based off of information, game sense. Munch, I believe I've ran into him in tournaments. Very, very solid player. Okay. So as you can see, here. I'm going to start moving through the map. And here's where some of the new mechanics start to come in handy. Okay, so I hit these zip lines. I start to rotate towards where I haven't been. And I actually end up running into our good friend, Mark Clark. He's a streamer over on Kick and a very large TikToker. As I'm dropping in, I can see him mantling up on this roof. Keep in mind, if you're on mobile and you're ever not seeing what a streamer may see, if you're on mobile, you can uh, squeeze and it'll actually... Or pinch and it will zoom in and maybe help you see what you need to see it's also part of the reason i render my videos in 4k so i spot that player up on the roof i'm using this to mask my location that guy definitely heard me dropping in and probably got the enemy dropping in notification so what i do here is as i mentioned in our uh, movement video in the past when i slide cancel i want to slide cancel far underneath cover and then pop up. So what I'm going to do with this slide cancel is I'm not going to slide cancel and pop up and challenge right here because more than likely he's going to be pre-aiming either here or he's going to be pre-aiming right here. So what I do, if I have the ability to mask myself with cover, I like to slide wider than they expect me to go and then pop up. So yes, obviously he could have pre-aimed me perfectly there, but rather than me slow strafing left or right, or maybe he can see my shoulder first, or maybe he can see my, you know, elbow first. Now, all he can see is, boom, my gun. Now, obviously, I'm not centering perfectly. I don't know where exactly where he is, but 
I'm always expecting, he's at the same elevation as me, I want to center at head height. And here's where you're going to start to see the SOA interceptor beam. There is something about iron sight builds Gas in Call of Duty inbound. Warzone where, and I've, I've mentioned it in plenty of videos in the past, rip iron sight based off from Jesus absolutely dry. That's what I mentioned. I'm like, dude, Munch, Mark, and now Jesus. All right, so I killed Munch, and now Mark Clark. Sweaty lobby. VPN really going crazy right now. Now those streamer bot lobbies. I'm looking for players who are that's gonna throw a that who Mark was shooting at, right? Because when I got onto the roof, I saw that Mark was shooting at somebody. I start getting laced from across the map. Like this guy is beaming. What are you doing? So I'm like. I got one play. Gotta, I'm not taking this fight. And listen to this. Enemies are dropping it. I gotta... Notice how I can hear that parachute all the way over there. Enemies are dropping into the area. Watch the skies. I start taking some shots. I know because I'm in a sweaty lobby, people are going to re-challenge me. So that's why I hold this aim, aim down sight. Even though I see him get undercover, the last thing I want to do is get caught in a mantle animation while this guy re-challenges me. So I hit some more headshots. And he challenges me again. Obviously, this is why I didn't pull my parachute. And it's why I swapped to a snappier weapon. I still have plenty of bullets. You know, I guess eight bullets. But I want my Ram 9, a snappier weapon, as I get close. He re-challenges like a demon. And I just barely get the shots off. Before getting killed. I end up plating up. Moving forward. Demons, brother. Absolute demons I'll in this lobby. And now I hear another person pushing me. I grab frag grenades. I jump up, but I don't mantle. Very important there. I jump up, but I don't mantle. I spot a player below me. Right there. I reload my weapons. I throw two sky grenades, which are not only useful for killing players above you, but also below. If you hear players throwing frag grenades, you hear that sound cue, you got to expect, especially if they're throwing straight up in the air, they're coming for you. You may not get the little red frag indicator, but they're coming for you. I mean, and then I end up pushing working. that player and taking him out. Come on. So here's a really important feature that they added to the game that's coming up. Okay. I need you to listen I mean, closely on this one. Works. I regret to inform you. I take this player out. I kind of mean that he's trying to stair glitch me, which is important for later. I jump up here and you can see, if you look closely, there is a player that shoulders out of this corner right here. I don't see him at first. Still don't see him. But then I see him start to move around. And get behind that cover. SOA beaming. That guy tries to ego chow me. Not really sure what he's doing. But I miss, I miss, I miss. And then I start connecting and rip him out of the sky. But listen to this. This is really important. You hear that? Right after I kill him. Captain. It's the redeploy sound. Captain. I'm in solos. No one's popping a redeploy flare. There's a new mechanic where if someone has a redeploy token, that big bag that you find on the ground, after you kill them, they will use a redeploy flare basically on themselves so you know that player is going to come back instantly. So now listen closely. As I mantle up here, because now I'm focused on getting back to this player who ripped me off on this head glitch over here. Usually you can mantle up here. It can be a little finicky. Come on. You hear that? The, whoosh, that's a parachute coming in. Come on. Come on. That's why I start getting more frustrated. I'm like, come on. Like, this guy's going to take my height. Damn it, bro. You hear the parachute pull? That's so annoying. Enemy dropping in. Well, who's that going to be? Well, it's probably... I think I got cracked on a leaf right there. I see this leaf falling through the sky, and I'm thinking that's like someone running left to right. <laughs> or right to left so annoying there's so many times i've gotten cracked on like birds flying through the sky like i am just laser ready for anything but who's it gonna be it's gonna be the guy that i just killed because he used his redeploy token which i know based off of that audio cue that i got so what i do i start shooting him i'm trying to lead him with some simtexes i don't get the kills but what i do is i throw a smoke on the outside to bait him looking over that side because what i don't want him to do is hold this ladder and kill me. I want him getting greedy on the outside. Also, the smoke is a great way to mask the sound of going up a ladder. 
He doesn't fall for it. He runs. No, no, he no, jumps. No, run. And because I'm in a sweaty lobby, I know I'm not just going to chase him. He's expecting me to chase after him. No, no, no. You don't get a run. Hit him up a couple times. He's probably not going to play it up because I only hit him once. He's expecting me to get greedy. Yeah, dude, you're so fucking predictable. So predictable. That's one of those things, man, where like... You have to gauge what a player is going to do. If I'm in a bot lobby, and don't get me wrong, I get bot lobbies here and there. If that guy got hit and I could tell that he was moving slowly or ran and just instantly turned his back to me, like, I know, okay, I can play this player aggressively. He's just going to run tail tucked. But since I'm in a really sweaty lobby, I know, okay, players are going to expect me to get greedy. It becomes like psychological warfare of predicting what your opponents are going to do simply based off their body language and the overall strength of a lobby. That's when you start to get into like a game of chess and it gets, it gets a lot of fun. Okay. So I end up grabbing a big game bounty. I go ahead and use that redeploy. I'm looking underneath me as I'm trying to find players, trying to rotate because I've cleared out most of this area. And you can see here, I spot a player jumping on this rooftop. I spot that player. I go to land in. He hears me. Oh my god! Hits a quick scope. Sweaty oh lobby. Scope. So I instantly disengage. I throw a smoke that covers my top in case he peeks over me. God, but this guy scope. messes up bad. He jumps and he pulls his parachute. Now I don't. He didn't have mountaineer. I ended up going back. This is a, a TTV player. He didn't have mountaineer, so he had to pull his parachute. I end up throwing in one plate, two plate. I should have put in three, but oh I challenge God. out and the new gun beams. The new gun absolutely beams. A lot of fun to use. And once again, the um, rotational aim assist on iron sight guns is very, very, very strong. So I do something toxic. I end up throwing in a cluster mine. I actually end up challenging out here because I don't like to be stuck in dead ends. He could have pushed out here and thrown a Simtex at me. But what I have to do in a situation like that is I know if I'm challenging without full plates ideally i challenge here and he's up in attack sprint animation as soon as i see him pre-aiming i'm like oh god i have to aim high anytime you're in a close 50 50 gunfight especially in a sweaty lobby shot location matters and i as much as i can if i'm in an ego gunfight i aim as high as i can and you'll see i even oh missed some god. shots up and over his shoulder but i'm constantly correcting up to the head now I don't know what happened. I've been live for already eight hours at this point. I spent a long time editing our previous video, but I was so dedicated to getting a gameplay with this new gun. I just locked in and I was I was playing some really good Warzone here. Okay, so I'm up. I have the big game bounty advanced UAV. I hear this player. I see I was thinking he possibly this player right here would have came towards me and I could have shot him out of the air. But as soon as I saw him stop short, I'm like, OK, my next closest priority is this player on my low right. And now I make a mistake here because I should have had my AR out as soon as I round this corner. As soon as I'm expecting a potential lane, and there is a potential lane where this player could come through because there's an archway right here, I should have had my AR out. I was a little bit late to it. Fortunately, he wasn't expecting me. I am lacing headshots right now. This gun is so good. So I go downstairs, I get the most wanted. I end up finding a PRD and move that little line out of the way as i'm pushing up i see two players one's on height but then i notice okay he's not on height anymore watch it goes from a top arrow to a basic diamond so that means he's going to be on this low left corner so i challenge out free aim i spot him and he's a riot shield player the bane of my existence Cheeky little jump spot right here. Keep in mind, there is a ping on my lower right here, okay? So I'm keeping an eye on that all this time. Challenge up. I look away, and if you notice, there is a glint that comes out of there. All of that little flashlight that we talked about earlier, I'm looking away from it, and then I notice it, and I'm like, oh, crap. This gun's really good. What I do is I throw a bounce smoke. What that smoke's going to allow it to do is just barely get over this corner. And then I throw my smoke. I don't pull my parachute because I don't want that player to hear me. But then listen. I can hear that player hit out a door. The only door that he can hit out is that lower door. I guess he could hit out that left door right there too. I hear him running. 
I break window. Chase after him. A stun comes down, which means that's the Riot Shield player. I think they're going to be fighting. He challenges. I'm not expecting it. I hit some good shots. Again, I throw a bounce smoke. The reason I throw a bounce smoke there is it, it takes the smoke hitting the ground before it blows up, right? So if you end up throwing that smoke on the ground, it'll bounce, and then it'll high bounce, and then it'll bounce again. It can be a lot faster to pop a smoke of bounce, bounce, blow up, as opposed to bounce, high bounce, blow up. It's all these little things, man. And I start moving. I start finessing. I'm thinking this guy's going to be chasing me through lower, and I make a big mistake here. I challenge up. I'm looking. Redeploy flare, which means that guy had a redeploy pack. And I see the right shield. I see this guy playing his day. And I'm thinking, oh, right shield player. This guy's a total bot. No way. I'm thinking maybe he has like an AMR, maybe a close range weapon. I'm kind of like, eh. I... And I'm like, oh, I he... knew it, man. I expected him to be a bot. You saw him, man. I didn't know what gun he had, though. And I'm thinking, oh, right shield. Maybe he's got like a close range weapon. I can make it up top. He has a BP-50 dude so there has been a big change inside of the gulag okay if you guys know for one of my previous videos i call out that we should be using the stair glitch inside of the gulag it's basically a free win and it's a mechanic they they need to fix but rather than fixing the mechanic which i understand to be a very difficult thing to do it's been in the game for a long time they have gotten rid of the little ramps that used to be here that you could use on two out of the three gulag map layouts and now the stair glitch is gone so since the stair glitch is gone, keep that in mind. You might need to play a little bit more aggressively as you go into your gulags. Now, I don't end up having that gulag. I have the third I option of the gulag, which is where you play off of the head glitches. So I chow right. I slide low. Try to find the player. I still don't know why we have lasers in every single gulag. What the heck are we doing here, Raven? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Challenge aggressively, push forward. As soon as I hear anyone cook a nade, if I'm in the position where I can push, I'm going to push because they're going to be stuck in the throwing animation. So from here, I make the decision. I have $26,000. I'm just going to buy all my stuff back. So I drop, kind of do like a little scouting. I jump up here just to like hear if there's any footsteps below me. I don't hear anything. I do a little bump check in the corner just to make sure no one's camping inside of there while I hit the buy station. I pop a UAV first before I pop my loadout because I just want to make sure I have info. And then I start to get the usual things. I get a plate box, I get a muni box, I end up throwing my loadout. Grab the new gun. Regain. And then you can hear, listen, I can see him on my radar one. And I can hear him pull his UA or pull his shoot, which means he landed based off of that ping up here. So I'm trying to see, I'm keeping my iron sights low because if I kept my iron sight high, my post of the iron sight would block. So if I had my iron sight high right now, like let's say I'm probably predicting him to ping up here, right? But if I had that skinny post here, then I would have the fat post right here. And then I would have the rear posts right here which would cover all of those other angles. I couldn't see him if he challenged here. I couldn't see him if he challenged here. So I'm keeping my iron sights, not blocking potential lanes where he could push. Then I end up spotting him. You can see him right there, show his head. I spot him running towards me. I try to nade him. He says, bro, 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 I'm just trying to get my load out and kill some fool that killed me. Yes, it's moving. Is it you down or what? What'd you say? Let me just buy load out and I'll, I'll... All right, all right, all right. Don't control me here, okay? <laughs> and he's like, I'm just trying to get my load out and kill some fool that killed me. I'm like, all right. The riot shielder, he, he, he is the enemy of the people right now, all right? You come get your shit. I'm going to go to gas station, don't... No, nah, I'm wrapping left. I'm towards gas station. And so I see him right there. Okay, I see you. Yeah. Good luck. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> I'm like, I've been in that situation before. He's on a vengeance mission. I'm like, bro, there's a riot shielder. He's the enemy of the people. This is the guy that we need to focus on right now. 
So I end up starting to move forward. I've got 16 kills. This could definitely be a really solid YouTube game, and it's why I'm sharing it with you here today. I end up pushing up, look for stuff like that. Anywhere. And I kind of say like, ooh. I gotta be careful, there could be rats anywhere. I gotta be careful, there could be rats anywhere. There's still 15 players left in the lobby, and oh, we find someone dropping in. Enemy soldier incoming. End up taking that player out. Grab some more plates. I'm looking for a 100% gas mask. He doesn't have one. End up spotting that player right down here. Honestly, a really dumb chow on my part to reach out the last angle that I just peeked from. But I was really feeling myself in this moment. I mean, wow. Out scanning the area. I spot him. Center as best as I can. I mean, wow. Trying to find more players. I'm like, oh, well, I could go for a higher kill game, but I don't necessarily want to chalk the high kill game and get greedy because I had been struggling. I had been, I had been putting up great numbers all day, but I couldn't bring home a lot of big kill victories. I bring home like a 15 kill, a, a 10 kill, a 20, but I couldn't get like a 25 kill or a 20 kill. And I'm like, oh, this is a sweaty lobby. I really want to bring it home. So I go up. I try to loot this guy. I end up finding 100% gas mask. Safe zone relocated. And I'm like, I know there are players that are going to be coming out of that, right? The zone is still up there. It's going to be hotly contested. Honestly, a wasted mortar strike on my part. I shouldn't have done that. I always preach to save kill streaks. That was really dumb. But fortunately, I find this player up here as he shoots an unsuppressed sniper rifle bullet. And I'm like, oh, brother, you have a gas to your back. You're sitting on that, like, that building. You're done for. I hear him. I hear something. And that, it's that guy way Enemy up there. The no effect on target. I mean, that that's Enemy one of those things that like most people don't realize is like, no way would I ever hear that guy before. Enemies are dropping into the area. Watch. End up shooting him. Can't wall bang that. Toss a nade up. Hook another nade. And that was the guy that I let live earlier. I gave him his chance. I let him get his loadout. I gave him his loadout, chat. He tried to land on my head. He tried to land on my head. So, audio cues are definitely a big thing. We're going to show you another new mechanic that they added to the game here in a second. Obviously, we've had some good coaching mo moments already. They've added things like the personal redeploy or the personal decontamination state, uh, station. If you guys don't know what that was, all the way back from Caldera, the little PDS that drops where you can put it inside of like the gas and it'll create a protective bubble around the gas. They okay. recently added that to the game. It lasts for 15 seconds unless you are in circle six or later and then it only lasts for half that time. It's nice though, you because you can see a little like pings of one, two, three, four, five of little capsules coming off it. And that'll kind of tell you when the PDS is finished. But I can see a sniper looking at me. I'm kind of confident because I have self revive. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for the shots. Once again, this gun is already a beam and then throw on the fact that I'm mounted late in the late in the in the shots. You can see the S curve. Oh, someone else, I think. That kind of starts to chalk me. There is a little S curve, and I'll show you that when we show you the build later. Oh, dude. There's this player down here, and I'm going to be looking for him forever. Okay? So I spot that player, run in. I try to get an angle on him. He gets inside. I'm maintaining high ground, keeping power position. It's end game. I spot this player off to the left and laces me. But what do I do? I'm not just going to hide and cower i know that i can use this information throw some shoulders try to find where he is and i spot him proning out right there he should have kept pressing the issue i don't know what he was doing and i can hear the slide the slide like oh okay i see him lead with lethals that guy's screen is red and smoke everywhere and i end up taking him out He's wonderful. He has a durable gas mask for me. I throw the smoke because that can be a dangerous cross. And I want to just get here as quick as I can. I take high ground. Nice little jump spot right there if you didn't know about it. I'm 
scanning, right? I'm looking. I'm looking for players who would have been over here. Players who would have been over here. Probably in there. I'm calling. Hey, he's probably in there. Because it's safe in the zone. Or I'm like centering towards that. Or in there. Or in there because we're looking for that player that five went in there. Five people left. I'm like, man, there's there's five like five people left. There's five people left. And then I hear this guy drop on my right. I don't know where he came from. I center thinking he's off to my low right. He's off to my left. I snap, correct, get the kill. I'm looking on my mini map, trying to figure out where that zone's gonna pull. I hear someone throw a cluster mine. I'm definitely not wrapping left. But I see that and I'm like, oh, is that like a player on the outline? I throw a, a tap to see if I get a hit marker. Gas is closing in. You can see, like, all all my eyes are looking for when I'm playing these games are ab abnormalities. I'm looking for movement. I'm looking for in inconsistencies in textures. Like, that's what my eyes are trained to look for after playing this game for so long. And so I decide, okay, I'm going to smoke my cross. I smoke here so I can get across all the way over. I have my SMG out. I'm expecting a player to be in here, so I throw a bump check and look to the left. He's not there. I start to look inside of that little second story window. I don't spot anything. I don't spot anything. Look in. I hear the gunshots over there. End up spotting a free muni. I'm not going to get greedy here, but I still want to like try to close off those people rotating. And you can hear a sniper. My first thought is, oh, shoot, there's a sniper on my building. He takes another shot. I see the tracer. It's someone playing aggressive who did an early gas mask rotation. Spot the player, get the down, but I hear people running and shooting on my left. So rather than let this player get into cover, I know I can kill that player. I can run up here, switch to my SMG, and then get the kill. So now it's a 1v1 situation. I don't know where anyone could be, right? I don't have any other information. So here's my thought. Either I'm playing in an Ultra Demon lobby and someone else also made an early gas mask rotation and is already established in the bottom of that building. Is that very likely? No, but it's possible. Okay, second option. Someone is camping under my building, right? And they're already established there and they haven't made a peep. Still a possibility, but I can't do anything about either of those situations right now. I can't. If they were there, whatever. But what I can do is... Maybe that skin, that, that bot skin, you know, the default Dan that we were looking through earlier, that ran through here, that I've been looking for the whole time, maybe he's under here somewhere, and I can do something about his cross from here to here. So I don't know where he is. I did have a little bit of information from earlier. I have no audio cue. But my thought is, let's see if I can catch him coming out of here. Let's see if I can catch him coming out of here. So I have plenty of nades. So my thought is, I'm going to blow open this top doorway and then throw another grenade after I blow that door open. Even if I blow the door open and he shuts it, now I know his position. He creaks open the door. Turns out he was on the low side. So I cook the nade. Start to get some shots. I don't even think that nade hit him. I think that nade... Yeah, that nade bounced inside. I take some shots. I could easily finish with the AR and I probably should have... But since it's been such a sweaty lobby so far, I ended up opting for my SMG, which has a little bit faster ADS and sprint to fire. What and I get the... Hey, man, let's go. I end up getting the kill. Now, oh if you didn't goodness, notice, there's dude. another so secret feature. It was mentioned lobby. in the... Um, it was mentioned in the patch notes, but there is now a final kill cam mechanic, which is so freaking cool. It's about time they add it. You're going to see a lot of people going for trick shots and stuff in the end game. I think it's going to be really cool. But ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of secret stuff, especially things like the Gulag Stair Glitch, which was a, I don't want to say a crutch, but a great mechanic for people to use if you knew about it. That's now gone. The audio is significantly better. We've got new things like the PDS as well. And probably what you're super excited about is the new weapon that I was using. It is the SOA Subverter. Now, obviously, whenever I'm posting videos, it is a freaking highlight reel. I am showing you guys the best of the best, the game that I've been trying to get all day. And... I just got to point out, there are plenty of times where I make stupid mistakes. And if you ever watch a stream live, you might see me in a bad mood. You might see me make some stupid plays. You'll see I pop a UAV here. And even after ping, 
after ping after ping you only see one player on my uav right check it out another ping only one player on my uav over here another one only one player on my uav only one player on my uav and then i get tunnel vision and i start to think oh my gosh i'm gonna take this guy out i'm gonna hold him i see the smoke but i don't see this guy over here Br plain as day on my uav i don't hear him oh my god what are you doing there Oh. And so you he see, pinged on UAV. and I got chat telling me he pinged on UAV. You guys get the highlight reels, okay? And I do coaching over on my second channel where I break down how I make mistakes. And then I do coaching on other players. I make mistakes all the time. I'm by no means a perfect player, but you guys got to keep in mind. On YouTube, you're seeing when everything that we're doing lines up and all the strategies and everything lines up perfectly. But you got to keep in mind, it's a highlight reel a lot of times, okay? Let's go ahead and get into it. This is the new SOA subverter, and I've got a few different builds to show you, okay? So this is not what I used in today's video, but it would be the build if you struggle a bit with recoil, okay? So once again, I'm here, I'm using my scuff. Once again, if you're go ahead and skipping ahead to the loadouts, I did re-sign with scuff. I signed for another contract. If you guys have bought the Envision or the Instinct in the past, the new face plates, if you bought them with the standard gray or white face plates, you can now buy the Iceman Isaac face plate that'll be linked in the pinned comment and the description. Okay, this is not the build that I used in today's video. I'll show you that here in a moment. But if you struggle with recoil control, this would definitely be the build that I would go for. As you can see, there's a little bit of an S curve there, which might make it a little bit difficult to control. But honestly, at the end of the day, especially with that iron sight aim assist, this gun is going to be a laser. Okay, so this is the build. If you struggle with recoil control, this is the build that I would suggest. But... I went with something else, okay? I swapped out the TLR-8, which hurts my aim down sight speed by 10%, and I went with the Cassis Break, which only hurts by 4%. The reason being, I'm trying to mitigate that horizontal recoil control, and I get 18% mitigation here, as opposed to 27, but since it's so sticky when it comes to like the, the aim assist, it actually really isn't that big of a deal. So I go with Cassis. That helps my gun feel a little bit snappier with more aim down sight. I also ditch the heavy stock and I throw on high grain. The reason I do this is not for the damage range, but for the bullet velocity. Without high grain, the bullet velocity is only 850, which really hurts your hit registration. I've seen a lot of people complaining about this gun. They don't like it because they're not rocking high grain. Okay, rock the high grain rounds if you're confident with your recoil control and it's gonna help out that bullet velocity and that overall damage range. And this is what I rocked in today's video. And I was absolutely lacing people across the map. Okay, go ahead and make sure you take your screenshot. Now, if you're interested in a mouse and keyboard build, I'm going to be working on that gameplay and I'm going to post that over on my third channel. It's going to take a little bit of figuring out because more than likely a mouse and key player is going to want an optic because one, you don't get the benefits of sticky aim assist and two, visual recoil is a little bit tougher to control over on mouse and key. So that's what I do over on my third channel is I make builds for both mouse and key and controller and I show you raw gameplay to go along with it. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe there. But ladies and gentlemen, if you took a screenshot of any of those builds or you enjoyed any of the new secret mechanics, some reiterating what were mentioned in the patch notes and some that were hidden and not mentioned in the patch notes. If you learned something new today, make sure to subscribe and drop a like for even more. We're going to keep up the educational content. We're not going to get down in the trenches with the weirdos who try to bring us down. The Academy, he's here and getting better every single day and i appreciate all the support i i trust me i read all the comments there were thousands of messages and dms and even emails of people like supporting the academy and the work that we do here and i love you all for that man it means it means the world to see how many good dudes are out there who believe in this process of getting better who believe in me as a man and uh it really really means a lot so even though i wasn't able to part all of them or reply to all of them i sure as hell saw them and uh, yeah, I think we got some got some new members of the academy and reaffirmed some others of the of the work that we do here. So thank you all for that. Thank you all for the support on stream, and I will see you all on the next one. Peace.